Hi, everybody. It's really great to be here, and it's wonderful to be here with Guy. Um, so, Guy, you uh, probably noticed there is another conference going on this week somewhere. Uh, so, at that conference, uh, at COP26, I think people are beginning to understand the risks, including to food supplies, but also that there is a massive competition for land, right? So, we are competing growing food, planting trees, restoring nature, producing energy, you know, how much land have we got, really? Yeah. So, so what I want to understand from you is how InFarm changes that calculation. What, what do you bring to the party that will make this terrible competition for land look better? Sure. So InFarm is a, an indoor vertical farming company that um, we've developed uh, highly scalable, modular, and automated farming technology that is extremely uh, efficient in terms of, of land use and resource use. And so looking at our base module, you know, which is about 40 square meter um, in footprint, that is uh, up to 400 times more efficient than traditional farming. Um, and it produces up to um, more than 500,000 crops per year on that footprint, which, you know, for perspective, that's kind of equivalent to a football-sized pitch uh, of farmland um, on the size of, of the average living room. Wow. Yeah. But, okay, so, so there's clearly a, a footprint issue. I, I mean, people might think, well, we've had kind of indoor farming for years, you know, aquaponics and, you know, big-scale stuff. So, so why, why is this so different? Why does it change it? So what Infarm does quite differently is um, the modularity aspect. Right. For us, it was very clear we need to find something extremely scalable. We cannot take now years to build each facility and, and scale up like that. We need, we need to ramp up our food production um, dramatically, and we need to start saving all of those resources. So modularity has been important since the beginning, and that allows us to be um, really fast. And as he was mentioning before, that's kind of what led us to be one of the um, largest vertical f farming companies in the world. And especially in, in, uh, in Europe, where today in 11 countries, um, more than 30 cities, um, selling in, in close to 1,300 supermarket locations uh, worldwide. And that speed of execution, coupled with the power of um, AI, machine learning, in many, many similar ways as the talk we've just seen, um, is unlocking yeah, incredible potential for um, impact, environmental impact, but also nutritional impact on, on each and one of us. You know, our, our crops are extremely nutritionally dense, um, highly sustainable, local, fresh, um, and, and just really better for you and the environment. So, so you're not a farmer. You weren't a farmer originally. So, so, so you know, briefly, how did InFarm come into being? How did you, how did you create this thing? I consider myself a farmer now, um, maybe a new, a new type of, of farmer. Um, but InFarm started from a very personal, very simple uh, need or emotion, if you will. And it's that emotion and feeling when you get when you go out to your garden or go out to nature, you pick something and you just eat it directly. You know, that such a gratifying feeling of, of both having that freshness, but also you know, growing it yourself. And in our quest to, to get to that, we were thinking, OK, we obviously have to leave the city. We have to live in the countryside. We have to start being self-sufficient in terms of food production, in terms of um, energy production. And I'm talking just personal sure. us as, as co-founders. And we, we started going down that path. And we saw that it, it's great. It's extremely labor intensive. It's very, very difficult. And actually, there's all sorts of really nice things in cities that we want to have in our day to day lives. And that's how we started thinking, OK, which kind of technologies can we use in order to grow the highest quality produce in the smallest amount of space um, so we can have it in, in, in our apartment? And that's how we started. We built our first farm in a, in a small apartment in Berlin in middle of winter, it was snowing outside, but we had this incredible uh, jungle 
in our house full of, of yeah, leafy greens and tomatoes and herbs. And we were skeptic, you know, is this going to taste good? Is, is it going to be good at all? And to our surprise, it was incredible. Uh, we started giving out produce to our neighbors. Everyone loved it. And, and that's kind of what triggered the whole thinking. Uh, maybe, maybe there's something here. Maybe right. this could be actually a business. So from that box in your apartment in Berlin, you've got to where you are. I mean, what, what's it, can we have a look at it? Can we? Can we? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good idea. We have a, a video prepared to just show you what, what it looks like. Should we, should we have a look now? Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, peek. LED, high tech. Um, you started in your apartment. Can can anyone have one of these, or, or, or how do you envisage this growing now? So we it, we, we started in 2013, so quite a, a while ago. And the first few years were really about R and D, both of the technology, trying out different kind of growing systems, uh, but also maybe as equally as important into a, a business model. And we've tried a lot, lots of different ones. And one of them was actually you know, getting this technology to end consumers so anyone can grow at home. But quickly we understood that's not the best way to, to have the impact we want. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started working with uh, retailers, food retailers. Um, so today we work with about 50% of the largest food um, retailers worldwide. And we are solving a problem for them, right? We, we are offering them this high quality, um, stable production in terms of quantity, in terms of price, um, so they can have access and their customers can have access to this produce year round. And I, I mentioned this um, to you in our free chat. I, I always like to think about it um, similar to 3D printing, where you know it's much, 3D printing had a huge, um, buzz right when it came out that we're all going to have 3d printers home we're going to print all sorts of stuff to fix our sink when it breaks or whatever and a, a great promise but actually where it had the, the biggest amount of impact was for um, engineers designers architects that is, that is solving a major thing for them that they can prototype much quicker and similarly i think when you're going to have the option either to grow things at home which is very difficult, even if it's automated, um, versus being able to just, with a click of a button, order uh, super fresh vegetables, which you know where they're coming from, you know what's in them, you know the environmental footprint, and it's customized to, to your um, preferences. I think it's a no-brainer, and you're gonna go with that. Right, so, so supermarkets essentially have your units, they're growing, fresh produce in the supermarket so no travel involved for the for the, for the product no air miles no no carbon footprint and no water really i mean at least very little water if i understand correctly because because it's sealed right yeah okay so so can you grow anything what what are you growing in fact yeah so today we focus on leafy greens herbs um microgreens that has been really what we've been doing the last few years. And you've seen in the video our crop science lab, which is hard at work um, in introducing new crops. So we're gonna have um, strawberries, um, tomatoes, mushrooms coming out in the next um, few months, starting in the, in the Berlin area, piloting that and then expanding. And we see a huge potential there. You know, we, there's over 25,000 varieties of tomatoes uh, all with different shapes, different sizes, taste, nutritional value um, aspects. Really an amazing world out there that we as you know, consumers are kind of denied. We, we don't have access to it because it's just, it's not commercial um, 
to grow it in the current system of food production. And our solution really changes that completely. Because we don't have to optimize for you know, a super lengthy supply chain that takes right. 3,000 kilometers and 28 different um, hands, we can focus on taste. We can focus on, on quality. And we, we do lots of research and understand how we can improve that quality all the time. And our tomato, for example, has two to three times more vitamin C than your average supermarket tomato. And you feel it in the flavor as well. Right. Why, why is that? Um, two, two main reasons. One is um, genetics, right? So I mentioned that we, we can choose varieties which are not optimized for that long journey. So today, when you buy a tomato in a supermarket, the reason it is being grown in the first place is because it's hardier. You know, it can it can stand that. It can travel. Journey right. exactly. Like it can travel, essentially. And we don't have to look at that. So we can choose varieties which are just right off the bat have a better genetic potential. And then, with the complete control of all the growing aspects, all the variables, we can start influencing the crop. Um, with new ways, right? And, and that's where machine learning comes into play. Every plant that we grow gets scanned continuously throughout the lifetime of it. And so we can understand you know, photosynthetic activity, um, diseases, growth rate, color index, all this really interesting biological matrix, if you will, and start connecting it back to the growing environment so we can optimize it. Right. But, but with all this high tech, is it really cost competitive with something just grown in the ground? Uh, definitely. So that has been something that you know, changed in the last few years. If you go back 10 years ago, uh, this is a pipe dream. It, it, it doesn't work. It's too expensive. It's not efficient enough. But in the last few years, there has been um, such tremendous um, efficiency gains, specifically on, on LED technology, which has, has made this um, competitive with traditional farming. And that is something which is extremely important for us at Infarm that the produce we have is affordable. Well, premium quality at affordable prices, that's what we always um, strive for. So we're cheaper than um, you know, organic brands and, and stuff like that and on par with what you would normally buy. So the other uh, thing that afflicts uh, uh, market gardening, of course, is pests and diseases. So, so how is it inside the module with pests and diseases? Do you have the same real world problems or, or are you immune? So um, we, no, first of all, we do not use any pesticides. Any pesticides, insecticides, um, fungicides, all the various um, types of names for, you know, what it is essentially is a poison, right? For, for bugs and insects. So we don't use that, and that's very important for us, and we take all sorts of measures to ensure we don't have to. So I mentioned modularity, that's important, because whatever you're gonna do, there's always going to be um, some sort of infection, whether it's a fungus or bacteria, it's just inevitable. Like, you know, we're talking about powdery mildew, which is a farmer's enemy number one, it's everywhere. Like you're all breathing it right now. It's, it's, it's part of everything. So we focus on making sure the plant is as healthy as possible so it can naturally resist, kind of like us. You know, you, you have to maintain your immune system. Um, but modularity helps us to compartmentalize in case there is an infection. So we don't need to lose um, the production of a whole farm, but just a small section of it. We can clean it up really quickly um, and restart it. So I can imagine that this would be really appealing to people who live on small islands or in remote communities or in, yeah. you know, places with long winters. Is that, is that where, do you have a lot of interest from that kind of community? Um, definitely. Um, remote communities or, well, really any community that imports its produce. And when you look at where produce, like vegetables, are mostly grown, it's, it's, it's really bound to climate, right? It's, it's, it's bound to the weather. And you have about five um, Mediterranean climatic zones 
which are the best for growing of vegetables and crops, and that's where most food comes from. And th that's um, a, a big part of what we're doing is democratizing um, climate, right? So the machines, what they are in a way, are, are weather machines. So, so you're bringing a mini Mediterranean climate to anywhere in the world? Exactly. That, that's, that's, that's going back to the beginning, that's what we had in our living room in January in, in Berlin. Fantastic. And, and is there, you know, you're, you're obviously continuing to develop crops, you're, 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 then this is a very high tech venture. So, so is there a kind of learning process for you for as you, as you, you know, go through the iterations? How does that work with the technology? Uh, yes, definitely. We're, we're continuously learning about um, the systems, how to make them better, about the plants, um, and it's a big part of of what helps us actually to scale, because each unit has all of these different sensors, you know, more than seventy-five different sensors. It allows us to capture this you know, huge amounts of, of data. It allows us to understand our crops much better than any farmer could in the last 10,000 years. And we, we continuously, um, you know, we create a feedback loop, basically, uh, between the growing recipe and the actual product and optimize continuously. So every farm we put out, every plant that grows is always better than the former one, in a way. Right, and and so where do you, you you make it sound sort of easy. I'm sure it hasn't been easy to get from from where you started to here. Oh no, no, <laughs> that was rather heartfelt. <laughs> but where do you see it going now? What what does the next decade look like for Infarm and for our food production? Um, so you know when we started in 2013, um, people called us crazy. And they thought, ah, oh, this is this is. You should give up now. Like, how, how can you, how can you make money from lettuce? You know, that's, that's an investor told us this early on. And it it has been a difficult journey. I think it's probably a difficult journey for any company that is in the impact sector. Uh, let's say uh, we pushed through. We we had, I think, uh, we were very lucky to to get the right people on board, the experts, and also have the right investors on board. And being, um, yeah, we, we, were, we take lots of risks. We, we still do. We, we, that's where we see the, the opportunity uh, for impact. And what's really exciting in this industry, in this field, is that it's only just starting. So it is already a confluence of a few different um, industries. We're out of time. Really? I am so sorry. But coming to a supermarket near you in farm, thank you so much, guys. It was thank you. Great to talk. Thank you.